40 microns. That's the temperature that they, they heat up to, and that's the radiation that they put out. So here's, whoops, again. Here's, the, here's a quiescent core, an infrared dark cloud. And you can see in this infrared picture at, at longer wavelengths, there's not much particularly happening here. These, these cores are not particularly marked. Maybe this one has a little bit. But the, the major cores here are quiet, quiescent. There's not much happening. But if you look at our friend here, this is my very favorite infrared dark cloud. We call it IRDC 43. Here's our poster child. There's this thing here, the green fuzzy thing. There's this thing here, green fuzzy thing. And there's this thing here, the green fuzzy thing. And if you look at 24 microns, which indicates an embedded young star, you see these things are glowing like gangbusters. This green fuzzy thing is a very bright source of 24 microns. This green fuzzy thing is a very bright source of 24 microns. This one is a very bright source of 24 microns. These things are glowing like crazy, which indicates you have very bright young stars going on, um, forming inside of these things. So the, the link between these dark clouds and star formation is absolutely unambiguous. This one's lit up like a Christmas tree, this, this particular source here. Um, every single clump here has an infrared source attached to it. And we can tell from how bright these things are what kind of stars are forming. They tend to be, the, the stars that we see easily are the very massive stars. These are stars that are 10 times the mass of the sun. They're B and O stars. So these are the stellar nurseries. They're, they're, the infrared dark clouds are where the star formation begins. The quiescent ones are an earlier phase where the stars haven't formed yet. And then these active cores, about a third of them, are where the stars have just begun to form. And in fact, what's very interesting in this particular crowd, this guy is a star that has formed. This is a star that's surrounded by ionized hydrogen. It has, be, it has joined the main sequence. It is a real hydrogen burning nuclear source. So we see in this star evidence for three or four very young stars, protostars, and one star that has just emerged from its parental. So now let's move on to what happens next. We have the protostar forming in the center of these cores. The next thing that happens is disk formation. Now disks form from a concept called the conservation of angular momentum. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the great conservation of angular momentum laws, but I brought along some, some toys to show you how this is done. And um, I, need, I need someone burly. Are you burly? You're burly. Oh, oh, you're, you're burly. burly. All right. You want the lighter? Burly. Yeah, sure. sure. Burley Mr. Burley. We call him. <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right, I want you to hold this. All right. Now, don't hold it against your chest because I'm going to spin it up. When I brought this particular tool. You have to come what about his gut? <laughs> come a little closer. Hey. Hey. Does anyone remember Marathon Man? Man. <laughs> 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 oh, I, just, I tell this to my undergrad now, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> he's a sick. He's an artist. Oh. He. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is spin up this wheel. And, and the law is angular momentum is conserved. So what I'm doing is imparting some angular momentum to this bicycle wheel. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is as quickly as possible, move the bicycle wheel from the vertical to the horizontal position. Oh, that's well done. You are so You are well done. Well done. I mean, Absolutely. Am I lying? There's an understanding. What about a rotating seat? Oh, what <laughs> Why, just, it's funny you should mention that. I happen to have a rotating seat here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, I'll do this one myself. If you can help me with the props here. All right. Oh, so the, sure. All right. <laughs> not, let, not let him. If you want to do it, you may. I'll do it. Experience. All right. All right. right, right. Yeah. All right. Um, we need lots of we need lots of room here for your feet to spin around. So put your put anybody your... got a vomit bag here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't done the, the vomiting one yet. That's that's coming. All right. You need to move a little bit closer here so I can spin this thing up. All right. So what what we need to do here? Spin this up. And now what I want to do when this gets going full speed? Wait a minute. We'll get it going really fast. That's pretty good. Put your, feet up. Put your feet up. And now I want you to just turn the wheel over. Just turn it over. Flip it over. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, not much friction there. But you, oh. 
<laughs> you feel yourself moving Absolutely. right and left? I'm sorry, the, this chair is not like sanctioned oil. What, what, should, what should be happening is he, she should be spinning when he turns the wheel one way. He should be, the chair should be spinning, but there's too much friction in this chair. You are, you are. <laughs> there is no doubt. Bad but, chair. So here's, here's another thing. As long as you're in the spinning chair, I think we can do this. Um, can somebody bring me two of those Coke bottles that are filled with Coke? Uh-oh. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Uh, and by the way, I just want you to like, just go ahead. Just, you know, just pass this around. It is so much fun. Oh, should I shake them up just, just match? As fast as you can. Oh, right? nice. And that's, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, you should get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. No, no. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, what I'm watching. Yeah, right. It's a gyroscope. It doesn't want to turn, right? Right. Oh, oh, right? Is it real? I don't think you got enough room. Right. Yeah. Telescope's yeah. behind yeah. you. Catastrophizing. Faster. Watch ship, what ship's here, man. We don't want to get your ears caught. Spin me around. My lucky mate. Oh, jeez. A little faster, man. It's now open the course. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. Now if I pull my weight in, I go lots faster and I go slower. Like a skater. Yeah. Like a skater, right. Yeah. 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 All right, well done. Yeah. 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 The only reason people make it is more fun than chemistry. All right. So most of you are familiar with this idea of the law of conservation of your math. What's going on here? This is one of the great conservation laws that Newton discovered. Angular momentum is essentially like momentum, but in a, in a spinning kind of way, if I can put it that way. Things that are in a state of rotation tend to remain in that state of rotation unless acted on by a torque. It's very similar to momentum. Now, what's interesting about the law of angular momentum, though, it's not the distance from the center that matters. It's the distance from the rotation axis. Right? So in, in the angular momentum case, Angular momentum is the product of the mass times velocity times the distance from the rotation axis. So now let's imagine what happens when a cloud collapses. When a cloud collapses, we have here. If you're trying to go inward, you have to change your radius. And you're changing your radius from the rotation axis. So that's not good. That's not allowed. But if you're going this way, you're not changing your distance from the rotation axis. And so that's just fine. Now remember, gravity wants to pull everything inward. It's going to have a harder time pulling things inward this way because there's this angular momentum thing pushing back. And you've all experienced it. Have you ever ridden that horrible ride on the amusement park, the rotor, where you're in this cylindrical room and you know, you're sitting oh, yeah. and they spin you around, the floor drops yeah. out. Yeah. You Flash feel this, you know, this thing outward. Yeah. Right? There's, yeah, yeah, exactly, and there's some weird projectile motions going on. Um, <laughs> but if, um, but there's no, there's no problem with up and down. It's, it's all outward, right? And that's the same, same thing going on here. If you're trying to, if gravity can pull in this way just fine. There's no problem with conserving angular momentum that way. The angular momentum is conserved because the distance from the rotation axis, this distance here, is exactly the same. So it can collapse this way very easily. It has a lot of difficult time collapsing this way because then you're changing the radius and you, you have trouble running into the conservation of your momentum. So when a gravitational field is coupled with rotation, you tend to form disks. So when a star is collapsing, it naturally collapses into a disk shape. Now that's very good for us because that's what plans are made. I have another demo here that shows this. And you guys in the front row all have your health insurance paid up? Because mm -hmm. honestly, I'm not sure this is going to work. 